girls and also guys as well. I want to remind you that you all have inherent worth within you. And if you haven't realized that, then this video will remind you how much you deserve the best of the best in this life. Let's get started. Number one, be fearless about walking away from anything that doesn't serve you. Now, I want to share with you my perspective on dating. Let's just say that right now in 2024, I honestly do feel like a 10 out of 10. Even though my life is not perfect, but inwardly, I do feel really good about myself. And if I were to look for somebody that I want to share beautiful moments with, I would want that guy to support me in who I want to become. And I'm also sure that if that guy feels like a 10 out of 10 about himself, then he would also want somebody that could elevate him to the next level. Which means that if I see somebody who wants my attention or who wants to be with me and go on dates with me, but I can sense that he needs me to feel like a 10 out of 10, then it's really hard for me to feel desire for that person. What I'm trying to say is that when you decide that you can't have more in this life, when you've decided that you only deserve the bare minimum in your reality, it's really hard for people to actually treat you like diamond. So as much as you think that just because you are Asian and you have this bamboo ceiling where you can't have a salary raise, or just because you are born in this certain country, or you are born into this certain family dynamic, that you can't have the exact career or the pay that you want. I want you to actually deny that fact and actually choose to believe that you deserve to have the best of every area of your life, whether it's a stable, a beautiful, long-term relationship, whether it's a thriving career where you are paid exactly what you deserve, whether it's any life conditions that make you feel at ease, that makes you feel like you are elevating yourself every day with as least negative resistance as possible. And in order for you to really register that, you actually have to let go of every single life situations and people that contradict those beliefs. Every single time we actually make the very firm decision to level ourselves up, there will be so many things in our outer reality that will harass us out of nowhere. People will actually try to pull us back from reaching our fullest potential. The minute that we try to negotiate and set boundaries and say, we really have things going on for our life. So can you please understand that? It's like this weird force where people try even harder to pull you back because seeing you rise threatens their sense of self. So the only way for you to end this reality is to walk away from it. There is no negotiations to make. If you are not cutthroat about this, then other people will continue to treat you like a doormat because your actions are not firm enough. So make sure that you love yourself enough to only treat yourself like a diamond and only accept treatments and reality that match the best version of you. Two, do not settle for less than you deserve because you think that you can't have more. And this again ties with point one, which is you have to be fearless about removing yourself from situations where you are not a 10 out of 10. There may be some circumstances where you may have to settle for a crappy job in order for you to pay your bills. But in your internal world, you have to refuse to believe that this is the best you can have out of your career because you can have more when you've decided that you are going to be more than who you are right now. And when I say be more, it's not exactly about changing yourself, but it's actually about choosing to elevate your state of being, choosing to expand your consciousness so that you see all the possibilities that are available for you. Now, back a few years ago, I didn't even realize that I was settling in my relationship. But what happened was that I really, really wanted to shred. But not only did I want to shred, I've always wanted to make a lot of money in my career. But when I'm in that particular relationship, if the guy is saying to me that he's happy with who he is and he's happy with what he's paid, then you actually feel guilty when you start to make decisions that are not congruent to that relationship. If your guy is unfit, you will subconsciously feel guilty about shredding. If your guy is not earning a lot of money, then you will also feel guilty about pursuing a successful career. And this is all unconscious. If you settle for any dynamics where the person refuses to improve themselves along with you, then you're actually going to start dipping and dipping in a very unconscious way. And the next thing you realize is that you've already made it 10 times harder for you to elevate yourself simply because you decided that you can't have more. Decide that you're not going to settle for a body that you don't like. Decide that you're not going to settle for habits that don't bring you to the next level. You have to never look at somebody else and be like, she has a bikini body and I don't, but that's just who I am. So I'm just going to settle for what I don't have because having a bikini body is not a part of my identity. No, if you want the bikini body, you have to rewire yourself to believe that you deserve to have the exact body that you want. So never look at other people people and say, I can't have that thing because that's not me. You are the operant power of your reality. And if you want to have something, the choice all lies within you to make yourself congruent to the version of you who already has that thing.
free. Don't try to change who you are because you think that other people won't accept the real you. Now, this was a dilemma for me back when I was a part of this not-for-profit organization. What I was told is that you should only wear conservative outfits, like a blazer on top and a skirt below your knees, but my actual self always liked wearing sexy and flashy outfits. I've always loved to dress up, and it starts from committing fortnightly to these practices to eventually this thing taking over my life where I have to keep dimming my power to be who I wasn't in order to fit in and please the people in the organization. Meaning that if I want to wear flashy things like this and I would outshine others, if I want to wear something promiscuous, something sexy or spend my time in a way where I feel gorgeous, then I'd start to feel guilty that all these people are working hard and I'm out here chilling and being the sexiest version of myself. You have to embrace the divine power within you because you are the one who's going to live with you every day. You are the one who's going to sleep and waking up with you every single day. And if you know that you like flashy outfits, you like gorgeous makeup, you like feeling like a goddess in your reality, then why the hell are you settling for environments where you can't be that version of you? I totally understand that there's this stigma where you have to be classy and wear conservative outfits that don't reveal too much skin. But again, if you feel empowered, showing a bit of skin, talking about things that may push a bit of boundaries, being this version of you who's experimenting with fashion and not staying in the box that people can find you to be in, then you have to decide that if this makes me happy, then it doesn't matter what other people think of you. Now, there was literally a point where I used to be scared that if I really show people the true me, then people won't actually like it because the true me is not that innocent. But at one point, it just felt like I always had to make other people feel 100% regardless of how I feel. If I didn't agree with what somebody was saying, I would pretend to agree because I wanted that person to feel like, yeah, the conversation's going well, but in actuality, my mind is thinking a totally different thing. And if I were to always voice what I was thinking, then I was scared that I would lose all these friends and no longer have people to hang out with. But eventually I came to realize that the more you are authentic in who you are, the more you embrace the version of you where it feels like, I feel alive. I love this feeling. I love how I'm shining. You can say to me, go and do OnlyFans or go and thirst trap men, but that's just you being envious of who I am. Even when I don't wear revealing outfits, people are still hitting on me anyway. So it doesn't matter what people say about you. There will always be judgmental people trying to put you down for anything that you do. So make sure that you keep doing you and never dim your own light just because you feel like if I'm my true authentic self, people are going to be offended by it. If I say what I truly think, if I allocate my time in the exact things I want to do each Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday evenings, if I spend my weekends in the exact way that I want to spend it, then people will feel like I'm being selfish. Well, that is their problem. You came here to be fulfilled and happy. And guess what? The more fulfilled and happier you are with your life, the more you'll keep thriving and add value to people anyway. So make sure that you never put on a mask just because people want you to behave a certain way. You deserve to be the real authentic you all the time, regardless of who you will lose along the way. Four. Don't chase instant success just because you think it will solve your internal problem. I used to think that if I'm monetized right now on YouTube, if I go viral with just one video and just get monetized now, then I'm gonna feel so happy. But along the way, why can't I actually allow myself to feel small doses of those feelings, even though there's no evidences of it yet? I have to admit that on this YouTube journey, there were so many times where I feel frustrated. I can't figure out why I'm not getting more results from this. And the simple answer was vibration. The the more you overanalyze and try to strategically think, how can I be more successful? How can I gain that virality? How can I get the quick money right now? How can I get that dream partner right now? It's like the vibration automatically becomes trapped and the lower you're vibrating at, the harder it is for that thing that you want to come to you. And I used to always get pissed off when people say, just have gratitude and be grateful for where you are when you are just so frustrated in where you are right now. And I guess the solution is to have the awareness that if you cannot handle the small more doses of happiness that you have today, then even when you have more grander and more flashier things later on, you're going to lose it instantly because you don't know how to keep it. Keeping it means having gratitude for what you have. And when you feel entitled, that's you not having the ability to hold the container to sustain those things in the long run. Now, chasing instant success usually draws us to narcissists, manipulators, and exploitive people that just wants to use us for their own personal gains. Because if we are signaling out to the universe that we have to manipulate our way through success, we have to put on a mask and pretend to be who we are not, then the same kind of people who are desperate about having success will be drawn to you. And that in a way will really disempower you when everything just gets so muddled up. Suddenly, instead of you wanting to earn more money and work less, you actually end up giving more free labor 
with literally no money coming in. And all these opposites starts to happen because your original vibration was signaling the state of lack. In order for you to be high value, you actually have to inherently believe that you are the value. You are the actual gem. So whether you go viral or not, you are still inherently valuable. Whether your bank account has more zeros right now or not, there are ways for you to make certain decisions that make you feel wealthy from within. Of course, it's harder to feel wealthy from within when all you see is lack and your bank account is at minus. But there are ways for you to shut the awareness of all this lack, either through meditation or through affirmations or just putting yourself in the right environment and just take a break from noticing all these things that are not happening and imagine that all of this is happening right now because your imagination is your reality. The more you can imagine the alternate reality where I already have this, everything is fine, everything is peaceful, the more you start to rest in your feminine energy. And once you're in that feminine receptive energy, that's when your value also increases because people will feel like you're not trying to take something from them. You're not dimming your own lights because you think there's a brighter light outside of you. And the more you can cultivate this practice, the more your value will increase because you'll behave in ways that signify that you are worth it. You are worth receiving. You don't need to run anywhere to achieve any kind of result. And that's the most beautiful place for you to be in. Five, don't be afraid of your own companionship. Along the way of us increasing our inherent worth, we will have to lose a lot of people that don't resonate with our new self. And if you are afraid of being alone, then you'll always make decisions that make you revert back to your old ways. And the thing is that no matter how many times you go back to your old environment, it's not going to change. So let's just say your old environment was fairly toxic. And you think that just because you gave people 30 days of no contact, or you've kind of walked away for 30 days, then when you actually go back to that toxicity again, those people will actually change. And I want to tell you that it's not going to change because that timeline is that timeline. When they say that your reality can change by you shifting your timeline, it means that you have to walk on a permanent parallel reality. Meaning that even if for 60 days or 90 days or for one whole year, you are about to be a loner. You're about to spend majority of your weekends on your own. You're about to be single for a while. You're about to have very few friends for a while, but you are so okay in your own presence. You are so okay taking yourself out on solo dates. You are so okay sitting down in romantic restaurants and really having the time of your life because I've been doing that and I really, really have fun. And in the process of you learning how to dress up for yourself, when you start to wear your makeup and really glam yourself up just to go and hang out on your own. You have no idea how empowering that feels. You are no longer sitting down there to have to seduce or present yourself or sell yourself to anyone because you are there to enjoy that plate of dessert by yourself. You are there to really connect with you and your inner child and you don't have to expend your energy to please anyone in front of you. If you feel being alone on weekends, which I used to fear so much after my breakup, you will never attract the reality where you get to feel feel loved and feel like you're caressed by the person that you love simply because your energy is not allowing those experiences to come into your life. The power of really embracing your own presence and your companionship, whether you watch the sunset alone, whether you go and shop alone, whether you have coffee alone or read a book alone, it's like nothing can affect you from having an awesome day. If this person doesn't want to show up, if this person is flaky, if this person is too demanding, it's like such a detached place where any guy that comes into your presence is going to feel good in your presence because you don't need anything from them. And in my personal experience, I have not yet met many guys that are in that very detached place because honestly, when I used to encounter these really old men, like older than my dad, but they're millionaires, even though they come off chilled, but they actually wanted something from me. They wanted my youth. They wanted me to make them feel validated, even though they had millions and millions of dollars. And every year they're turning over like $30 million revenue, but they still wanted some sort of validation from a young girl. And even though I've met people my age or in their 30s, it's like the exchange is always transactional. They will come off as being chilled and being okay, but really what they want, if it's not sex, then it's validation. They want me to approve them of their worth. And I realized that it's because I was also wanting them to approve me of my worth. It's like everything is me pushed out, literally. Even though these men older than my dad are millionaires, but I was also wanting to seek validation from them that because I have their attention, it makes me closer to getting their knowledge and their wisdom for me to become a millionaire. And it was just such a weird dynamic. When you can break free of the to chase other people's companionship, then you'll become so high value because you are the light and you know that you are the one that's creating this positive energetic field for yourself and therefore you're only sharing this to other people and because you know your boundaries so well you are never oversharing you are sharing just enough for people to enjoy the presence with you but once they leave you your light still remains and that's how you always want to be to stay high value six never underestimate the 
power of small doses of daily happiness. So during the times where I was really, really dipping, I couldn't even see how I could access so many happy experiences with little money. So for example, girls would attribute being high value with having a Chanel bag or a Gucci bag or a Louis Vuitton bag, but I didn't have $7,000 on me to actually buy those handbags. And during the times where I did have the income, it's like $7,000 was almost two months of really, really hard work. And if I spent two months of my salary on a Chanel handbag, then how am I going to afford other things that I want in my life? So in this harsh period where I have to adjust myself to know how to really appreciate the value of happy experiences without having to pay so much for it. It's like the biggest and most profound lesson I've ever learned in my life. Because once I start to believe that this is just a temporary situation, the lack of cash flow is so temporary, but I'm giving myself permission to somehow feel rich without having a lot of money. So instead of me spending $7,000 on a Chanel handbag, I would actually come back and ask myself, what makes me feel really beautiful? And how much does it truly cost? And I'll tell you how much it truly cost. A $5 choker made me feel really beautiful. This earring is $3. My gigantic eyeshadow palette right now is $30. And in Sephora, for $30, you only get like a mini neutral tone palette. You can't even play around with the color variety on those eyeshadow palettes. And in order for you to have like 16 colors of the same tone, you have to pay almost $100 for it. But I got exactly what I've always wanted as a child for $30, a very gigantic eyeshadow palette. In terms of face cream, my good friend gifted me this Lancome set, which cost $300 altogether. But before the Lancome set, my skin quality was the same. Me having that skin set just made my skin less dry, but it didn't really help with anything, to be honest, besides making me feel more expensive. Therefore, I could almost say that just having a quality diet, having good sleep, having good thought patterns, having a good self-concept made my skin quite clear on its own without any creams. And that's what I'm trying to communicate with you about small doses of daily happiness. Although carrying a Chanel bag could make me feel expensive while I'm carrying it, but without it, I already feel beautiful. And because I already feel beautiful, it's like the universe will always send me all these little resources to help me feel even more empowered. Like this $5 choker, or this earring, or these headbands that are like $10. And they just light me up so much because I love dressing up. And dressing up doesn't have to be expensive. Okay, I agree that sometimes I do want to wear great quality fabrics, and good quality fabrics cost a lot of money. But there are so many times where all these things are pretty decent in quality and I ended up paying less than $50 every time. And the other example I want to give you is fine dining. For me, because I've trained myself to not eat too much, since I do the beach clips, I have to stay shredded. And so while I'm not starving myself, but I'm eating in very small portions each time. So when I go to an expensive restaurant, it's not about the food that I'm eating that I care about. It's about my experience there. Feeling pampered, feeling chosen, feeling loved. So one bowl of $22 dessert is enough for me. And when you order something at an expensive restaurant, which I recently did, you get like something this small. It's a really, really small portion, but it's just the right amount for my stomach. Therefore, it only cost me $22 in a fine dining environment for me to feel fully chosen. That $22 bowl of dessert is enough for me to feel like I just ordered something worth $500. At the same time, the food that I'm eating is just an enhancement. So it's a win-win for me that small portions actually make me feel even better because I'm not bloated after I eat it. And it's like, damn, if you really understand what happy is and how it doesn't have to cost a lot of money for you to experience so many little doses of happiness, you will experience so much fulfillment along the way to your success. And how does this come back to being high value? Well, the thing is, the more you are fulfilled with where you are, the more you can find ways to really spark that inner joy within you. Whether it just costs $5, whether it costs $20, and these nails, they cost $13, by the way. And the glue cost about $7 or $10. So altogether, I get to wear these nails for $20 for a month because I get to wear them and take them out. So I don't even need to spend $200 on this. And you have no idea how great that feels because if other people feel good by overpaying, that's great. But I don't feel good overpaying. I feel good having expensive things. But if that expensive thing is not worth the price, it makes me feel even disempowered while I'm constantly overpaying for things that are just not worth it. And it makes me feel so empowered that so many things are accessible when you just raise your vibration and stop judging yourself for what you don't have. Okay, guys. So these are all the ways you can be high value and stop settling for less than you deserve. If you guys like this video, feel free to comment down below what you want to see. And also let me know if you guys like this video or not. Other than that, I am more than excited to keep growing with you on this journey. So I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.